So the poem was My Mind to Me a Kingdom Is and it was written by Sir Edward Dyer. Uh, let me try to recite the first two stanzas of the poem. My mind to me a kingdom is, such present joys therein I find, that it excels all other bliss that art affords or grows by kind. Though much I want that most would have, yet still my mind forbids to crave. No princely pomp, no wealthy store, no force to win the victory, no willy wit to salve a sore, no shape to feed a loving eye. To none of these I yield a stroll, for why my mind doth serve for all. This is a poem. Please take notes whenever you can, if you understand uh, my poor English. My Mind to Me a Kingdom Is by Sir Edward Dyer presents the poet's state of mind in the first stanza. The poet is happy, he is content with what he has and he sees his mind as a kingdom. You know, this is something really important when, you know, yesterday while explaining, introducing the poem, I asked you that, do you consider your mind as your kingdom? So if you treat your mind as your kingdom, then, you know, it, it says, it means that you are giving much value to your mind. Uh, it's precious for you. So uh, the poet is making it clear to the readers uh, that his mind to him is his kingdom and he is happy with it. Whatever he has got, he is happy with it. That's there is no need to seek any worldly pleasure elsewhere. The poet is always in a blissful state for control over his mind. This is uh, something even you know, more interesting uh, the poet is making. The point is, you know, sometimes uh, I am sad, you are sad because, okay, I don't have a car. I don't have a beautiful house. I don't have uh, uh, some, you know, the, what do you play? Uh, the video games you want. Or sometimes you are not happy because you couldn't go to uh, Bangkok for a trip. Sometimes you are not happy because you don't have these, you don't have that. But, you know, any worldly materials or uh, any other thing that makes uh, us happy. But the poet says that I don't need anything else when I have got my mind with me. Uh, and it's my mind is always in a blissful state uh, because I can control uh, my, my, uh, my mind. So when you have control over your mind, then you can control all your desires, all your wishes. Like uh, once you have full control over your mind, you will never going to be upset for something that you couldn't possess because you can control your mind. Uh, if you fail to get something that you want, and if you can make your mind understand that, okay, Russell, you don't need it, or you can't afford it, so control your mind. And there you stop and you be happy. You are no longer upset. Somebody is not in a, uh, you are in a relationship with somebody. And, you know, yesterday I told you about expectation. When you expect nothing from others, and if you, you know, it's not easy task to not expect from others, like we always expect things from others. So uh, if you can have that control over your mind that you don't expect things from others, you don't become upset. So that's the reason uh, uh, Edward Dyer uh, says that he is always happy, he is always blissful because he has got that blissful uh, uh, in a state uh, only because he has got full control over his mind. That's in the first stanza. In the second stanza, you see, 
No princely pomp, no wealthy store, no force to win the victory, no will wit to serve a soul, no shape to feed a loving eye. To none of these I yield as troll, for why my mind doth serve for all. The second stanza, the poet says that he doesn't seek any kind of victory. You know, when you are in a competition, we all are in a competition. And when you are in a competition, uh, there is a risk of uh, loss. Like, uh, and once you lose, you feel sad. And when you win, uh, if you possess the victory, you become happy. And uh, suppose uh, the competition, young minds like you uh, all are in, or sometimes, I mean, your parents, your families, your schools, and your society, surroundings, relatives, they all force you to be in a competition. Like after every exam, you, you get to know, you are asked, uh, and if you don't if you don't score an esta then you are compared with you know Mubashira that uh, oh Sohel you haven't scored esta Mubashira scored esta you are a loser she is a winner so yeah. you know, this, this sort of competition uh, I mean young this people it, it happens I know it happens like even uh, for a man like me, suppose uh, what happens among relatives? Okay, uh, suppose I have salary. You have salary. Yeah, salary is an issue, or your bank balance is an issue, or in <laughs> families. Uh, uh, suppose my younger brother he owns, uh, you know, two cars. Uh, sometimes people ask that. Okay, your a younger brother he owns two cars, and you are still riding a bike. So what have you done in life? You have done nothing. You are a loser. So you see what makes you upset. But if you have that control in your mind to not be in any sort of competition like this, and if you expect people be such stupid all the time, that, okay, they are stupid people and they are going to ask me questions like this, and I'm not going to be bothered by all this let them speak what they want to and i am not going to be bothered at all so that's the uh, you know uh, the spirit the poet is talking about here uh, even he hasn't any craving to please a lady with uh, anything you know this is very interesting that uh, uh, you know i am not even in a competition to you know it's really difficult the reason why the poet mentioned about a lady you know, pleasing a lady uh, that you you can't please uh, women uh, from a man's perspective. Uh, so it's something that perhaps not of your age, but I'm sure you have got my point. Like uh, as a husband, as a lover, uh, it's really difficult. Perhaps the women say the same thing about men, but in this poem, Sir Edward Dyer is a man and he is talking about women. Those things can't enslave the poet as his mind doth serve for all. Like you control your mind and you don't allow your mind to get upset about uh, anything. I'm sure I could make you understand the first two stanzas yes or no sir i have a question on the first two stanzas yes. um sir mm. uh, the first two stanzas is like not to like in bangla please to make it more stable no i i should not speak bangla i think i could make um, it clear um the first two stanzas are like uh each year is that we should not like worry about what other people have. No, I mean, listen listen to me. Nowhere it it talks about the readers that what you should do or what you should not do. The poet is telling his state of mind. The poet is sharing his story with us. Now, as a reader, 
if you want to learn any lesson from his stories so you learn that's your problem uh, but he is not giving us any prescription the poet has written this poem to satisfy his soul you know that's another reason he was a happy man that he was not there uh, he did not write this poem to satisfy the readers now and if because if he did so then you know there was a chance of being upset by the poet by right? like uh, you know the readers uh, many readers might find the poem uh, boring and that would make him upset so he did not write the poem to satisfy anybody he wrote the poem to satisfy his own soul and that's the reason the poet is always happy because he uh, he is describing his state of mind under certain circumstances okay stanzas 3 and 4 may i ask akmar to read the uh, the next two stanzas 3 and 4 yes sir yes sir i am taking care but my devotion is right I see how plenty surfeits oft. I see how plenty surfeits oft and a hasty climber soon do fall. I see that those which are aloof are uh, mishap dot certain most of all. They get with toil, they keep with fear. Such cares my mind will never bear. Okay. Carry on with the next stanza. Content I live. Content I leave. This is my stay. Oh wait, Akmar. I suggest. I suggest all of you. I am not really sure how many of you have got it downloaded and printed. Those who haven't, uh, you must make a list of the words you don't know the meaning of or you find unfamiliar. So make a list of the words that you find very unfamiliar or new to you. Every time you get a word. you mark it highlight it or you write it down somewhere in your copy you do it honestly you don't just say yes and don't do anything so you highlight or you copy like if you don't know the meaning of the word content i leave so what does the word content mean you need to know so that's how you enrich your vocabulary too so and yes carry on akmar content, content i leave i leave this is my stay I seek no more than my suffers. I press to bear no haughty sway. Ah, uh, look what I lack! My mind supplies. Lord, thus I triumph like a king, content with that my mind doth bring. Yeah, this is a wonderful poem, a long poem though. In these two stanzas, uh, Sir Edward talks about the hasty climbers of the human race. you know hasty climbers like when you are climbing a mountain and if you if you really want to go fast huh, on top this is the uh, most horrible thing that you can do while climbing a mountain you know in human race we all are in a competition to reach the top of a mountain mountain like success mountain we all want to be successful in life and we all want to beat others and reach the top of that mountain first and that's that's the uh, you know uh, competition we all are in in our uh, from our own uh, position like you are in a competition to reach the top of a certain mountain I am in a competition to reach a top mount a mountain top. We all are in a competition, and we all are hasty climbers. Hasty means quick, fast, uh, you know, uh, climbers. So those men never find happiness in the present moment. Those who are quick to climb a mountain, they are never going to be happy in life. because they they carry 
an unstable state of mind do you understand that because you are busy climbing the mountain and reach the top you are not enjoying the present moment of uh, your climbing or the present uh, uh, surroundings or uh, you know you don't have time to look back you don't have time to look around because you are concentrating on climbing the mountain did you get my point please say yes yes sir great so and you once you are in a competition like this you are always in a fear of losing uh, you know lurking over their minds you know fear of losing like when you are climbing a mountain you want to reach the top and at the same time you want to make sure that you don't get uh, you know uh, you don't fall behind of others and uh, it's a horrible competition those who are crazy for money suppose uh, you know they are so busy with uh, that you know money affairs that they don't have time to look around they don't have time to enjoy their surroundings their family their uh, you know so many things suppose uh, it it was full moon the night before eh? uh, now when you are busy climbing a mountain like that you don't have time to you know enjoy the beauty of the moon or enjoy the beauty of uh, you know somebody's company you know someone is not muted please mute yourself if you are not asking me any question there is always a fear of losing uh, you know th- those who are very rich uh, those who possess a lot of money they always have the uh, you know fear of losing that money uh, if you are in a very powerful position you are in uh, uh, you you are always in a fear to lose that power and that's what keeps your mind unstable and uh, unhappy and stressful all the time uh, the the best thing the poet says about his mind here you see that line uh, that the poet needs not to worry about such things as he is content with his life you know if you are happy with whatever you have then you are never unhappy like uh, suppose you you uh, you have a bike eh? and you you don't want a car uh, if it doesn't come automatically Uh, you are not in a competition to uh, win a car to buy a car if you are not in a race to win uh, a star in all the subjects if you are not in a race then you are happy you see it makes you happy because you don't need to study much you don't need to spend a lot of time on english literature and mathematics and all these so you are happy all the time okay i am scoring b reading a little bit studying uh, not much uh, because you are studying you are listening to music you are giving time to your family you are doing whatever your mind wants you to do so if you are passing a life like this then you will always be happy because you you have no pressure of scoring a star in all the subjects you have no pressure uh, to score uh, to make uh, mr russell happy uh, with anything because it, because you don't want to make him happy you want to make your mind happy so if you have a target like this then you are always happy the poet needs not to worry about because such competition because you don't have any competition yes the poet needs not to worry about such things as he is happy with uh, his life what he lacks his mind refills like once if you lack something suppose if it's a material thing then your mind tells you 
as a friend don't worry my friend you don't need it you be happy with it so your mind gives you that support and that support is so important uh, to be happy in life uh, does the poet triumphs like a king whom nobody can death drone and you see the last two lines of the fourth stanza does i triumph like a king and if you are not in a competition if you are not in a uh, in any sort of race you are actually the king of uh, uh, your mind and you are ruling that kingdom because uh, uh, you know you don't you do you don't want to you are always a winner when you want something when you expect something from others or from the world and if you don't get it then there is a chance of uh, getting a uh, you know feeling of uh, uh, losing that you become a loser when you don't get it but if you are happy with whatever you have and now it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the poet wants us all to uh, uh, not be ambitious about things uh, that's another debate we don't want to go to that debate that being ambitious in life you are too much ambitious sometimes when you are uh, you know too much ambitious that also creates a lot of pressure in your mind so uh, Okay, we we come back to that point sometimes later, uh, but yes. Our yes. Class timing is over. How much time is? How much time is there? Our class is two minutes. Ten minutes. In I. Our class is at ten five, and it's in seven. Oh 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 oh. So. Did you understand my point? Yes. yes so uh, what says us? Uh, we don't. like the poet asked us to like make our mind happy by not doing any competition right sir yes yes that's the point thank you very much we are going to continue self is not bad right what competing with ourselves like yeah, not yeah yes yes if you can compete with yourself that's fine but yeah, if you are in a competition with others then there is a you know chance of uh, people criticizes us if we lose the game we will come back to this point the next day thank you class thank you